This tutorial shows you how to use the Nanslow Remote Photosynthesis Apparatus. When you first log on, you'll see this control panel. You may have to scroll down, but at the bottom of the page, there's a yellow button that shows you how to join the voice conference when you click it. You can follow these directions to go to the website to join the voice conference. Once you're there, you can either use your telephone or your computer mic and speakers to join the conference. And all the information for how to do that will be here, will be available on the screen. Once you've joined the voice conference, you'll want to take control of the interface or coordinate that with your lab partners. By right-clicking and selecting Request Control, you'll have control of the interface, unless somebody else has it, and then you'll be placed in a queue. There are three different graphs in this apparatus, and there's a camera that is looking into a photosynthesis box in which there is a small terrarium with some gas probes and a temperature probe mounted on it. You can move the camera, but it really won't give you much of a different uh, view of the situation. You can turn on the lights by clicking these buttons. For example, here's the grow light, and when it turns on, once the camera adjusts, you can see a little bit more of the um, equipment that's inside. These are the gas probes and the temperature probe. The grow light is kind of a purplish light, and it's kind of funny looking, so we'll turn it off. The white lights are a little more useful, so let's turn them on. So inside the terrarium here would be some plant material or some leaves or something that will be doing the photosynthesis for this experiment. You can see the temperature is reflected here and the set temperature is reflected here. There may be a difference between them because the temperature is affected by a heat exchanger that is mounted inside the terrarium. And depending on the efficiency of the heat exchanger and how it's working and what temperature you're trying to reach, um, the set temperature might be higher or lower than the actual temperature. But the actual temperature is what you will want to record for your experimental information. Also shown here are the um, oxygen and carbon dioxide levels inside the terrarium. They aren't really changing much right now because there's nothing in the terrarium, but when you're doing your experiment, there'll be something in there and the oxygen and CO2 levels will be changing. You can see those values not just here digitally, but on the graph if you click the graphing on button. And right now these values are just bouncing around, it's just kind of noise. Um, as you collect data in a real experiment, these values will change significantly and this little bit of noise that you see here will just be kind of swamped by the, the actual signal. In the case of the temperature graph, it's just a flat line in this case, but it it will change because you can change the set temperature to uh, change the conditions in the biosphere or in the terrarium. When you're finished graphing, just turn the graph off and then you can export the graph data and the graph image to another program. You can select which one you want and click export to clipboard and once you've done that you can paste it into a document. It's important to note that if you don't paste it into another document, the next time you copy something to the clipboard, it will overwrite whatever was previously there. So there's the graph data. And now we can export the graph image itself by simply changing our selection and exporting to clipboard one more time and then pasting 
into our document. This way you can save the data and image for later manipulation and inclusion into a lab report. Once you've collected and uh, saved each graph, you'll want to reset the graph for your next run. And when you're all finished, make sure all the lights are turned off. At some point, you'll want to pass the control to another student, and you can do that by releasing the control, and then another student can take control of it and collect some data.